that's when I get off this road. It's so bumpy. Our names are Mike and Heather. We're traveling the US in our van Appa on a mission to visit all 50 states. Subscribe and join us as we try to figure out this whole van life thing. As always, thanks for watching. top of Mount Roosevelt and welcome to day two of exploring South Dakota. Yesterday we started the day in Wyoming at Bear Lodge or better known as Devil's Tower. We then explored the town of Lead and Deadwood before ending the night at Roosevelt Tower. We're going to be heading out from here and heading towards the Black Hills Loop which should culminate in a visit to Mount Rushmore. But before we get to Mount Rushmore we have one very important stop which is the Crazy Horse Monument. Crazy Horse was part of the Lakota Sioux tribe. He fought back against the United States government when the United States went back against their treaty and started taking over the Black Hills once gold was discovered in towns like Deadwood. So he's a very influential person in Native American history and American history and now there is a monument dedicated to him as well. So we've come into the Crazy Horse Monument interpretive area. It's really pretty amazing. There are museums, they have restaurants, also, yeah, gift shops. <laughs> a lot of things going on. They have a viewing platform for the monument. Inside they have information on the process of creating this monument as well as Native American history of the Lakota Sioux and other Native American tribes from this area as well as other Native American tribes from across the country. We made our way back to the van and even as we were walking out of the visitor center we still got this really magnificent view of the crazy horse monument and it's just amazing to see the progress on it it's just a really cool thing to know that we're here part of history in the making yeah it really is an absolutely incredible monument in terms of the scale and it really is something completely unlike anything we've seen. Just a little bit down the road from Crazy Horse is the Needles Highway and that is the highway that we are taking over to get to Mount Rushmore. So you can take the thruway or the expressway to get there or the main highway but we are taking the twisty, turny, windy 14 miles. Yes with some absolutely scenic views of the Black Hills as we make our way through with some amazing rock formations and, and tunnels and tunnels one lane tunnels and I think Going this way culminates in the really amazing first view of Mount Rushmore as opposed to, to maybe the, the quicker shortcut way. We're taking the scenic way. So we've come to the Needles Eye Tunnel and there's a rock formation that's called the Needles Eye. So we have parked to check it out and then we're gonna check out the tunnel which is another one of those really narrow, really short one lane tunnels. So that's the tunnel that we're going through. That's really pretty interesting. <laughs> The cathedral spires that we just passed through were actually an inspiration for Mount Rushmore as we see it today. The person who originally had the idea was traveling through here and had thought of carving western icons into the different spires. That idea was eventually shot down but slowly kind of turned itself into the presidential figures on Mount Rushmore that we see today. The highway that we're on now, Needles Highway, cuts through Custard State Park on its way to Mount Rushmore. There is also a wildlife loop that we just learned about that cuts through Custard State Park as well. So we're gonna do a little detour before we get to Mount Rushmore and go look for some wildlife. We were literally just at the beginning of the drive and already saw a small group of deer so this is already proving to be a good wildlife spotting area we've come to a buffalo jam so there's a herd of bison that are making their way across the road there's a huge herd going actually okay they're all up there
What do you see? The donkeys. <laughs> I was keeping my eyes out for the donkeys because that was one of the things that I really wanted to see along this drive. And we found some. They almost look like statues because they're just standing perfectly out there. And with the rain coming down too, they're just they're just chilling. So I'm very excited we got to see them and we got to see lots of bisons. We've got about half the loop left to go and hopefully we'll see some more different animals. Whoa, Whoa that was a lightning. super lightning blast. But they still didn't even move. We have officially come to the end of the scenic loop and we are heading towards Mount Rushmore. Whoa. It is like the perfect view of it. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. That's really cool. Then we'll make a tight corkscrew turn to pass under the bridge. You'll see how the bridge basically attaches to the end of the tunnel. Did it have to be built this way? Or were Gideon and Norbeck just wanting to make things interesting for self-driving visitors like us? I think their mission wasn't simply to create the easiest route. It was also to build something unique and fun. How do you even get in to see if anyone's coming? Should I honk? So we're about to go through this tunnel, which is on a U-turn. <laughs> I'm honking to let anyone know that we're in here because you couldn't see going into the tunnel. Whoa. Whoa. That's crazy. Oh, and then we've got like a complete like corkscrew going down. <laughs> That's where oh, we just came out of. I didn't even realize we went over a bridge like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, We've been listening to our gypsy guide and apparently this road is just full of novel kind of interesting quirks where it'll split off and have like this section, us on a one lane where we're getting our own experience through the woods or corkscrew turns and uh, tunnels built into the rock face and all Next sorts up, of neat things. Mr. Doan Robinson Tunnel. Whoa. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. The designers of the road actually created this tunnel to give almost a postcard view of Mount Rushmore as you drive through. <laughs> Thankfully the views can also be enjoyed from inside the van, so we're going to drive through that now. You ready? <laughs> Just so they know. That's pretty impressive. Not only did we get a postcard-esque view of Mount Rushmore as we were coming along this Iron Mountain Road, but we're about to go into the Pigtail Bridges, which are named after the corkscrew shape. We've got the first one here. Driving this road at times has sort of felt like you're driving on a roller coaster. The Pigtail Bridges. finished up the scenic drive that is the Iron Mountain Drive. That was by far way better than I could have ever imagined it being, going into those tunnels and just being blown away by the views of Mount Rushmore at the end of it. That is the first time that I've ever seen Mount Rushmore. Mike has been here in the past. But now we have officially made it into the Mount Rushmore parking area and it is going to be a mad dash to the ice cream place that I've been looking forward to all day. So fingers crossed that we make it. They close at five and it is 4.42. There's a little bit of blue sky off in the distance, but right now it is very much raining in this area. Hopefully the blue sky comes back and we make it to ice cream, but uh, let's go. <laughs> We made it in time to get ice cream, but unfortunately the flavor that I was looking forward to most was not available. Thomas Jefferson, who is one of our founding fathers, actually had an ice cream recipe that they sell at that ice cream place. But unfortunately, it must be popular. It was all sold out, but can't complain when 
whenever we get ice cream, no matter the flavor. But now we have made our way down to the walking path along Mount Rushmore. To the Sculptor Studio. So we are coming up to the Sculptor Studio now which has some information about the sculptor who was Gutzon Borglum. He was the person who designed the Mount Rushmore sculpture. And so there's information in there as well as some of the early models for what the mountain was going to look like. We have just left the sculptor studio and we're walking on the presidential trail, which gets you closer to the base of the mountain to see the figures carved there. We are about as close as you can be to the base of the Mount Rushmore sculptures and you have a fantastic view up to see the four presidents. Those presidents were picked for a specific reason by the sculptor Gutzon Borglum. Each one of them kind of represent an important aspect of American history. So George Washington was the first president and sort of the father of the country. Thomas Jefferson was the main author of the Declaration of Independence and played a huge role in expanding America with the Louisiana Purchase. Abraham Lincoln, of course, presided over the presidency during the Civil War and reunification as well as the Emancipation Proclamation, Theodore Roosevelt with his conservationalism and the formation of the national park. So each president kind of represents some aspect of the presidency and the American sort of journey as it's grown. We walked up some more steps and a little bit further down that boardwalk and I think now we've officially come <laughs> as close as we possibly can, or at least legally can, without being Nicolas Cage in National Treasure at the very least. But <laughs> yes, this is as close as we can possibly get to Mount Rushmore. We think we validated our parking. We'll see when we try to leave if that works out or not. But we also did manage to get our passport book stamped. Those pretty good back-to-back -back, uh, national park spots. Yep, so we are slowly but surely filling up our national parks booklet here. It always feels good to get another one in the books, quite literally. Mount Rushmore, I think it, it met expectations because I saw a lot online people saying that it was smaller than they originally thought it would be in person. But so in my mind, I thought it was tiny. So it was actually a little bit bigger than like what I was picturing, but it's still kind of mind blowing to know that those four heads, even as big as they are, would all fit into the crazy horse monument that we saw this morning. And so having been here before, I think I had the expectation of what to see, but I will say the drive in this time was much better. The last time we came, my family just drove in kind of the normal road. And so this time going through Custer State Park had some really incredible driving, the scenic views all along the way. And then also the presentation of Mount Rushmore at the end mm -hmm. was really spectacular. So that would definitely be the way that I would suggest coming in to view this. It, it really made it kind of an experience. Yeah, so seeing it from afar as you're coming through the tunnels and then seeing it up close where you can see the chiseled rubble from the carving of it was just a really cool experience and now we are headed out of mount rushmore onto our next destination which hopefully will be food because i am starving the ticket the exit and we're gonna see if this works because if it does it means i'm correct oh yeah <laughs> Good morning from Rapid City. Last night we did manage to grab a bite to eat here in Rapid City and also a shower at the Planet Fitness here. So it was a good night, but today we are ready to get back on our South Dakota road trip and head towards the Badlands. Yep, so we have the last of our three gypsy guided loops to do today. And Rapid City is actually a fantastic point to jump off for each of them. But today we are headed to the Badlands. Badlands, we have a very important detour to the town of Wall, more specifically to go visit Wall Drug, which is a famous, I won't say little store because it has morphed into a very giant store out in the middle of nowhere that offers free water. So we've been seeing 
so many different billboards on the side of the road advertising wall drug and their free water and their five cent coffee so it's something that started very small as just a pharmacy and with the advertising that the owners did has exploded into a tourist stop all of its own but the advertising was originally done to try and pull tourists going to Mount Rushmore. Which again worked because we're now here and are curious enough to want to go check it out. I'm getting lots of flashbacks to Route 66 along this stretch here with all like the old vintage signs that are still reflecting the prices of the 1930s when this opened and I guess they still honor those prices so there's still free ice water and coffee is still five cents. a little bit of everything here. So we've come into Wall Drug and there is a little bit of everything. And here there's photos that have different pictures from people all over the world showing how far it is to Wall Drug because that was one of the kind of themes that we saw on a lot of the billboards. We're now in the wall drug backyard where they have a giant jackalope and a lot of other sculptures, but we're gonna enjoy our free ice water. Only a good day for free ice water because it is very hot out here. Odds are that you'll get up there. Oh, there's a little stuff on there. Is there? We've come into another building here in the wall drug complex and there's a Tyrannosaurus Rex at the end of this walkway. We have survived the maze that is Wall Drug. It is definitely very touristy. They have everything from church chapels to giant T-Rexes and literally everything in between. Inside the store, almost at like the heart of it, is the original Wall Drug. So you could see the original pharmacy and how it kind of like grew and like spider webbed out and took over the entire block. So it is a very neat tourist stop for sure. You can definitely spend a lot of time in there because there's even an arcade, a restaurant. So you could spend a whole day within that store just in itself. But we went for the free water that we kept seeing advertised. And now that we're hydrated and ready to go, we're gonna head into the Badlands, which is just a stone throws away from here. So let's go. Headed to the Badlands, we are passing just fields and fields of sunflowers, and they're just absolutely beautiful. All right, let's give a cheerful hello to the gate attendant. I'll be back on the other side. Hi, welcome to the Badlands. Hi. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We just entered into the park itself, and off to the right, there's already so many prairie oh, dogs, yeah. but there's also a road that you can go to where you can actually see the prairie dog town. I suggest we go as far as the Roberts Prairie Dog Town, which should be less than 10 minutes. It's well packed. It's unpaved, but there are some sections where it feels like you're just driving on straight rumble strips. It's so bumpy. so bumpy. On our way back to the main scenic loop uh, through this bumpy road, there's lots of different scenic turnouts. So we pulled off on one and we are seeing in the Badlands now, and it is just absolutely stunning. That's pretty cool. stuck in the mud let's pack up a life baby and call it a night cause the 
longer we stay here, the harder the fight. The reason why these are called the Badlands is because of how hard it is to live here between the extreme heat, no water, rough terrain, and we're definitely getting glimpses of that here today. But this is a very good place for fossil hunting, hiking, and wildlife spotting. So I guess it's not so bad. We've already seen some bison way off in the distance, prairie dogs, but there are coyotes and black-footed ferrets, which would be cool to see, but super unlikely. Rattlesnakes, don't know if we really want to see one of those, but a lot of different animals and things going on in the park. I said, hey, yeah, 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 call it a start by leaving behind what's breaking our hearts. I said, hey, yeah, 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 follow the spark, ain't nothing but so behind me is what they would have called the wall, early settlers, but this wall made it really hard for people to live here and get from one side to the other. And there's actually a little overpass there, but now there's a road that makes it a lot easier. We've been really enjoying all these scenic overlooks as we keep going down at the main scenic drive. And uh, we are just very fortunate that we have a road to be able to cut through that wall rather than whatever little overpass that they had. And even before then, no overpass because that would have been terrible. Basically, there are sort of two levels to this Badlands National Park and just this area in general. The Buttes created a wall which had that sort of boundary that made it difficult to navigate from the upper area down to the lower prairie. There would have been passes developed to get from the upper level down to the lower but that wall is where the town of Wall that we just came from got its name. We have pulled off at an area where we can do a couple quick little hikes. So we're gonna get out of the car and go do that. But first we need some hats, sunscreen, and uh, definitely some water because <laughs> it is quite toasty out there. We are on the fossil exhibit trail. So we're not gonna see any fossils on this trail, but what we're gonna see are the layers in the rock where the fossils are found. We should see a lot of informational placards because this is an interpretive loop. I don't know if we're in the right rock layer to see where the fossils would be because I think that might be the furthest down layer from when this was an inland sea. After a grueling 0.25 mile hike in the sun, we are back in the AC and ready to continue on this drive. We have come to the hike that we are going to be doing here at the Badlands National Park, and that is the Notch Trail. It is about a mile and a half out and back, but there should be some ladders to climb, some exposed cliff edges. Some so, rattlesnakes to look out for. Yeah, so it should be really fun. We're gonna be on the lookout for rattlesnakes, and we're going to be on the lookout for a cactus that might stab through your shoe. So we've got closed-toed hiking shoes on, plenty of sunscreen, some, some liquids to stay hydrated, and we're ready for a good hike. I was out drinking, looking for the next thing. I couldn't really settle down. Always on the road, I didn't want to slow down. But baby, then you came around. Yeah, you came around. No, Thank you. Yep. What'd you think? Out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> we just climbed up the ladder to get to this upper kind of terrace and we've got a little bit of cliffside walking to do to get to the end of the trail. But you're now close enough to touch the rocks and this is all sedimentary. So it is just sand or dirt or mud packed down together over years and years, millions and millions of years to be rock, but it's still flaky, would flaky and kind of fall apart in your hands, which is just really cool. That ladder wasn't as bad going up, but I am a little bit nervous for going down. It almost felt like those ladders at the fair where you have to like balance yourself to get to the prize and touch the bell at the end. A game that I was never very successful at, so <laughs> we'll see how it is on the way down. The sun will shine on you wherever you go, wherever you go. And when it gets dark, stay strong. So we made it to the end of the Notch Trail and we came to, I guess, what 
is the notch in the sort of canyon rock face wall and we were met with a fantastic view of the prairie down below us so it was really amazing to go from the stark white walls of this area to the green open prairie down below so it was a really cool hike i liked that we got to walk along the cliff edge the ladder was a lot of fun and it's very hot, so we're gonna get headed back towards the van. AC! Put your foot down and then your hand. Always your foot and then your hand. We made it back to the van after that very hot hike in the Badlands, so we definitely experienced why they are called that today. It was even more sketchy going down that ladder like I predicted, but I made it, I'm alive back in the air conditioning, which is definitely a blessing at this point in time. Yeah, we took about 10 or 15 minutes back in Appa to soak up the cold air and kind of reset ourselves because it, it really was a very hot hike. It was super exposed, so we felt that sun going and it's about 100 degrees today, so uh, we're happy to be back in the air conditioning and kind of wrapping up our drive through the Badlands National Park. We have officially left Badlands National Park and pulled over at the first gas station, which is actually a trading post that we saw, to get ourselves some ice cold beverages and some treats to reward ourselves after that hike. It was a little over a mile, but it was definitely very, very hot. So it wasn't the most like strenuous, but the heat made it feel like that. So the Badlands National Park was our last little check mark on our list of things to do here in South Dakota. And we are heading to Nebraska next, which is a new state for me. Is it for you too? It is. And yeah. for Appa. So it's a new state for all three of us. Uh, I'm just so distracted because people are feeding prairie dogs over there. And we passed a place that just as we left the National Park saying that, um, like, that you could feed them. But we learned that they carry the bubonic plague. There are fleas on the prairie dogs in some yeah. cases that may carry bubonic plague, which does have a cure, but is not something that I would ever really want to yeah. get. So that's why they're like, don't feed them, don't feed them. And I can't believe there's businesses right outside the park that are like feeding them and all these little children are going to get the black plague. But on a better note, South Dakota was really awesome. We saw some incredible things and we are really excited to go into state number 30. Three. Pretty sure it's state 33 is Nebraska. So if you've watched along and followed along with our South Dakota journey, thank you so much. We hope that you enjoyed watching. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments for oh, you. Oh no, I have a question. If anybody has had that Thomas Jefferson ice cream, please let me know how it was because I was very <laughs> disappointed that they didn't have that flavor the other day. Yes, definitely let us know if, if it was good and should we go back for it. But yes, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in Nebraska. Yeah. Don't feed the prairie dogs. <laughs>